Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Welcome to your Timeless True Love Read. I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons Mal for short, professional witch, professional intuitive, president of Drawing the Circle Productions, the Archangel of Lyons, Mark Angelo Lyons, fellow Earth sign Virgo that I am. You, my cat, can call me Mal. Hey, <laughs> hey guys. You know, if you're going to have a tagline, at least enjoy it. Uh, let's uh, let's talk some business here. We are doing a, a basic Celtic cross uh, with some other cards added in uh, for your path of true love reading. Uh, true love reads are about your spiritual growth, your spiritual path, your healing journey, your hero's journey through your relationships. They are not always romantic sexual in these readings. I do not control that, although up to interpretation. So please, standard YouTube reading rules apply. <laughs> Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. I will say this over and over again. I don't understand why anybody thumbs down on any single YouTuber reading because it's just not your read or you don't like the truth that's sitting on the table. So just keep that in mind. I am a Virgo. I'm 52 years old. Yes, I know. I don't look it. Thank you. Uh, but, you know, I've been, been reading cards for 40 years. I started when I was 12. So, you know, you learn some shit along the way. And that's what I'm here to do is give you the clarity, guidance, and grace that I can through the Celtic crossbred, which I cut my teeth on at age 12, uh, uh, to, to show you where you are on the path of true love. GPS version by Celtic Cross. Looking down from the satellites. Um, and by all means, check your other signs because you've got more than one soul contract going. There's more than one person crossing your path on the, on the path of true love. Um, so if this one isn't romantic, sexual, maybe, because a lot of people are looking for that. My guides know that. They know it better than we know it. So uh, this is all about the healing of all of that junk. So uh, all the decks that I read are always in the bottom of the description box, right? If you want to check it out, other cool links, my book, Words of Grace, you want to check it out on Kindle, that's all down there. Uh, other than that, all I can ask from any of you watching any of my readings, both feet on the floor if you can, only if you can, right? But focus on your breath, if you will, right? Cap, stay grounded, connect to Mother, right? Oh, Mother Earth, <laughs> who gave birth to you, who gave birth to all of us, right? And uh, let's get up in this gig, right? I will do the same, get you the clarity, guidance, and grace that I can from my pantheons of the divine to which I am intimately contracted to do this work. I don't know. Beats a desk job. I'm at a dining room table. That doesn't count. Please take a nice deep breath. So I've been in prayer for like 48 hours. <laughs> Here we go. My collective pantheon of angels, archangels, goddesses, gods, ascended masters of true love, and the higher selves of all involved. Fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above, please. I need just two cards from the Caroline Mace archetype deck. One to represent the Capricorn Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm watching this video, receiving this reading. And one to represent whoever is crossing their path on the path of true love in this timeless read. Understanding that it could flip-flop, right? Cross-watchers, it might flip-flop. Even if you're uh, the Capricorn, you might be in the crossing position. I've seen that happen with clients. So please, my collective pantheons, show me who this Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign is, and show me who's crossing their path in this timeless true love read. Bam. Let's see. <laughs> okay. You know, you already know what the archetypes are because I write them in the, in the title so that you know, right? So you'll either get that jolt to do it or not. Uh, but, but I'll say, this is a tricky bunch here. Uh, you got the student archetype, which is lovely, right? Uh, in its light. In, in the shadow and light uh, attributes of archetypes. The shadow is always toxic. Think of it as lead. If you get lead in your bloodstream, big problem, right? But lead has three more atoms than gold, right? So you burn off, you transform, you alchemize, you heal, you forgive from lead to gold, from shadow to light, from toxic to healthy. And that's what the path of true love is all about. Boom. Sorry. Wish it was about getting our own way, but it's not. The course of true love never did run smooth. Ask my friend Billy. Google it. Uh, so the, the, the person crossing your path is the, has the victim archetype. Now I will say, uh, this is the wisdom family of archetypes. There are nine different families, like pantheons. Uh, this is the survival family archetype, and everybody has the victim slash victor archetype. As toxic as the shadow is, is as brilliant and healthy as the light is. Keep that in mind. They're neutral. Where are you on the scale, or whoever this person is? But that's the thing. You could easily identify with the student, and at the same time, because everybody has the victim archetype lifelong. It's what's called a chronos archetype. Lifelong, all of it in the in linear time from birth. Um, 
So uh, I'm going to read you what these are, and then we're going to lay ten cards, uh, Celtic Cross on top of it, uh, Daughters of the Moon for the interior dynamic, and then ten cards, Mythic Tarot for the exterior dynamic, two oracles, and a healing mantra, and anything else they tell me to grab. So, student, you ready? Attend. Uh, shadow Attribute. Uh, arrogance in the pursuit of destructive knowledge. <laughs> done that. I'm a horrible student, by the way. Brilliant teacher, horrible student. I'm self-taught. Autodidact, so I don't necessarily resonate with uh, the students so much. Uh, unwillingness to translate knowledge into uh, action, which is so not me. Uh, but let's say uh, uh, arrogance in the pursuit of destructive knowledge. I taught witchcraft. for. I still am. I mean, I'm still fucking teaching witchcraft, I guess. But spell work in particular is a, a art, science, and spiritual path, right? Uh, and people will ask, it's like, well, how far can I get away with? And then once they realize that it's all up to them, uh, the pursuit of destructive knowledge, and you could play that out in 10 billion different ways, right, in many different fields of study, but the light attribute is usually what I see in a Capricorn, right? Um, humility and devotion to knowledge. Uh, openness to lifelong learning. Why? Because that is the slow and steady wins the race. I will get wisdom from this. Whatever it is I'm dealing with in my relationships, in my finances, in my body, right? Earth signs. Uh, I'm going to be okay because I'm going to learn. I'm open to learning. Now, I will say the grace of humility is the first grace I talk about in, uh, is it the first grace and the last grace? Very well, maybe. Uh, the grace of humility, the maiden grace. Grant me the maiden grace of humility to know that I do not know, but I'm willing to be shown the truth. I know that I don't know. Because you know what? We don't know everything. It's just how it is. So that openness to lifelong learning in a relationship. Now, dealing with the victim archetype. Take a breath. Because everybody has this one, as I said. So here are the things to look out. And remember, we all do this. So that's why we really need to lay tarot on this. The shadow attribute. Uh, playing the victim for positive feedback. Uh... Sorry, my eyes are a little foggy today. Uh, uh, oh, oh, I forgot. Come here. Uh, contact lenses and pollen. Great fun. Uh, okay. Uh, playing the victim for positive feedback in the form of pity. Right? But you're pretty aware when you're doing that and when you're not. Uh, inability to maintain personal boundaries. And honey, <laughs> no one's born with personal boundaries. We learn them from our families. <laughs> like my chakra with a rake, mom. Uh, the light attribute, though, what this person is shooting for, as are we all, uh, prevents you from letting yourself be victimized or victimizing others. Now, this one has what I call it a, a dual name. It's victim, victor, V-I-C-T-O-O-R, like the spoils of war go to the victor. But I will also say there's a third one in there, two toxic, one healthy, two shadow, one light, victim, victimizer, right? Because you can victimize yourself, you can victimize other people. Anybody who's ever victimized anybody was at some point victimized themselves. It's just how it works, basic psychology, really. But then to transmute that, transform that, alchemize that into victory. Uh, the, the, thank you. The victim, victor archetype is the guardian of boundaries and self-esteem. And please remember, self-esteem is a noun if you are a cross-watcher by that's again for all of us. Work. Let's keep going. <clears throat> this is what you were waiting for. Now, now we know the uh, the dynamics uh, you're dealing with. And remember, you might, you know, the person you're, you know, your other person <laughs> might be that student archetype. Both feet on the floor. Mark, breathe. Hmm, yes, up through my feet, up through my root. The goddesses of Earth and the sign of Capricorn, please, ten cards, Celtic cross to clarify. The uh, path of true love for this Taurus collective sun, moon, rising, Venus, sun, watching this video, receiving this reading in their timeless true love read. Please show me the internal heart, throat, third eye crown dynamic for the student. The lover's card. Not always about romance, but we'll see. Uh, more like a life-changing internal decision that you, that whoever the student is, if this is you, I'm going to read it as though it's you, but keep it in mind. Because this victim archetype, this could be you as well, because everybody's got it, as I said. My goddess is what crosses, uh, the victim that crosses the path has the Capricorn card. <laughs> you see me, I'm not looking at it, I'm like, look, look over there! <laughs> Just you for a second. <laughs> look over there. Uh, oh my god, so look, this is what I mean. You could be either one of these. 
uh, uh, and there's uh, a mirror there. Now, is that Twin Flame, Soulmate, blah, blah, blah? There's a bunch of videos in the description box defining uh, Twin Flame and Soulmate, a new definition based on the work of Matt Kahn. Uh, it's called uh, Soul Contracts. Twin Flames and Soulmates Redefined. Brilliant. R truly brilliant. A head spinner for me. Changed the game. Because I fucking hated that word. Those two words, right? Uh, they're both forms of soul contract. And he is our last card down, the healing mantra. So look at this. You've got a student making some big decision. Now, the lover's card is really about when your head says no, but your heart says yes, what are you going to choose? Throw chakra. This is where you make your choices and your decisions. Choices have consequences, but level of choice, level of consequence, right? Well, I have a cup of coffee <laughs> with one tablespoon of turbinado sugar and a teaspoon of honey or all honey. The same consequence. <laughs> It's like Taco Bell, right? It's like certain restaurants. It's all the same thing. It's all different combos, right? Of the same thing. Delicious, don't get me wrong. And DoorDash delicious. Uh, <laughs> 2 a.m. Uh, um, but a decision is life-changing. <laughs> I'm moving to Mexico, <laughs> right? Like, that is a major life change decision, just as an example. And if some of you are moving to Mexico, oh my god, he's so psychic. But with this victim victor archetype, this is somebody on the inside developing their highest potential. Uh, in this deck, this uh, this is called um, the Crone of Pentacles. Pasoe, the Buffalo Woman, very much the teacher and the way shower. So it's interesting, sort of a teacher student dynamic going on here. You may very very well be teaching self-esteem to this person if this is you, right? Um, but that would be the King of Pentacles uh, in the traditional tarot. So there is some maturity here. I mean, we've already got one major arcana card down on the table, and it's the lovers of all things. So I'm going to pull back on this being romantic just yet, because it feels like whoever this is that's crossing your path here um, may be uh, formidable. <laughs> it's got that feel from it. You know, that Capricorn, Cardinal Earth, incredibly creative, but slow and steady wins the race, right? Ruled by Saturn. I'm telling you about your own astrology, right? So this is weird. Okay, oh my God, you're totally marrying each other. Uh, let's see. What's going on here at the core, please? My goddesses of Earth and the sign of Capricorn. What's going on in the subconscious here? Maybe both of them are unaware of this. Uh, nine of Cups. So... I kind of do feel like both of you might be very emotionally comfortable in your own skin to a certain extent, but, you know, I, as I'm, I really don't like keywords so much for tarot cards. I try and go on the energy on the card and what's surrounding it, but this does feel like wish fulfillment. This does feel like inside both of you know, <laughs> maybe you don't want to deal, right? Both of you might know it here, but you may not want to completely accept it here. Uh, that, that there is something flowing here. Now, this is Quan Yin. Uh, the Chinese goddess or bodhisattva, depending on who you read, of compassion and contentment, really just chilling. So this is, yes, a single person energy in that sense, but like, I get that lovely flow, and what they're showing me here, it's sort of like, do you see the water and the lovers and the water there? It's almost like this decision, you have the choice whether or not to flow into this and feel this or not. It's part of that. You know, sometimes you can feel the feeling without acting on it. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Grace of fortitude. <laughs> Here we go. My goddesses. Yeah, it's the heart chakra chapter in my book. <laughs> Grant me the grace of fortitude to feel this without acting on it. Please, my goddesses, what is in there behind? What's in the Capricorn's behind <laughs> position? It sounds worse uh, at this time. Most true love read. Well, Eight of Pentacles, you certainly got some serious Capricorn energy here. Appraisal, not analysis, appraisal. Appraisal is assigning value, like if you have a house appraised before you buy it, or a car, or a piece of jewelry, right? Um, they may tell you what the, if the stone is a diamond or not, right? Um, but really, when you have something appraised, what's its value? What is it worth? And looking at how she is staring there at the... Um, at the sunflowers that she planted the season prior. She's looking at these saying, do I want to plant these again? Do I want to raise it to the ground and salt the earth? Do I want to keep half, sell half, right? But in connection to where representing you in the present moment, she's looking at the past. So there might very well be, as a student, you really alchemizing right now um, 
some wisdom. Really seeing what you learned as a student, and I would say in this case, of true love. True love reading. So any spiritual emotional work that you're doing, great love inside of you in the subconscious. Subconscious is like staring off a dock of the bay, right? You can only see so far down. You can't see the bottom. Uh, murky. But let's keep going. What's the crown? Me fifth position, the crown is sort of like something orbiting, like right above your crown chakra and just going to drop down into the satellite dish. And you can swat it away, right? Or you can incarnate it. A creative idea for a Capricorn? Are you kidding? Take them forever. <laughs> but, but it'll be done perfectly. Please, my goddesses, what crowns the caps? A creative inspiration. No shit. <laughs> I told you I'm good. Look, I better be good. I've been doing this since I'm 12. Okay? Do you see that? Boom! Ace of Wands. Creation. Literally says on the card. Creation. So there is an inspiration, a spark hovering, getting ready to come down into. Again, you can spit on that if you like. Uh, <laughs> just smash it if you want. But I feel like with this appraisal card and the student, if you're willing to take this next journey, it's almost like a call to the hero's journey. I um, wonder if you two have met yet. Hmm, their boundaries might be up, this uh, victim archetype with your Capricorn energy. Uh, what is before the Capricorn? We have flippers. No, we don't. Breathe. This is a lot. That, uh, I think I've been feeling this in the crown since before I started shuffling these cards for you. What is before them on the path of true love? Please, my goddesses of Earth and the sign of Capricorn. Reversal. Hanged man. Now inside of you, there is surrender here, but there is also sacrifice. Now sacrifice need not be something on the outside. It may be sacrificing a point of view, a belief system. Maybe something that you appraised one way and now has shifted. And why wouldn't you, right? If you're really a student that Capricornian slow and steady wins the race, then it's going to say, all right, I got to hang out on this. I have to look at this differently. Um, I love this version. It's called Reversal in Daughters of the Moon. It's a woman voluntarily hanging upside down over a tr on a tree branch over a river. I mean, you're going to have to get really close to your screen to see this. Maybe you can Google it. If you see her face above water versus the face below water, she looks a little stressy, stressy above water and very eyes open, relaxed and smiling. So I feel like um, depending on what these appraisals were in the past, you might not be so very open uh, to this. Uh, particularly if a victim, victor archetype, again, what everybody has, particularly if if, um, if it's a little slow and steady for you, right? The decision seems to be yours, though, if you're the student. So what's the lesson here? Please, my goddesses of Earth and the sign of Capricorn, what's the lesson we're trying to learn here? Yeah. Oppression. The devil card. Two different uh, devil cards in this deck. It's, patri it's a matriarchal deck, so they don't use patriarchal imagery like Satan or the devil or anything like that. There are a couple of males in the deck, but they're very healthy. <laughs> I love them. Uh, so this is a woman buried under rocks, but the rocks are the faces of people. This can be societal pressure, social conditioning, family patterns, childhood patterns, societal patterns, fears, chains, break chains of illusion and set all things to right, reveal what has been hidden and bring true love to light. Oh, honey, that ain't a prayer. That's an invocation. Your life blows up as you, your fears come up. So I'm going to say that your lesson is about facing your fear, shadow work. All right. Um, at the time I'm doing this, at the time of this recording, I'm getting ready to do the next series of full moon to new moon reads, weighing reads. And they told me this time, seven card draw shadow work. I'm like, oh, right. Mercury's going retrograde on, I think, the 29th of, um, uh, of May. Again, depending on when you're watching this. 2021, we're at the time of this recording. Um, so, yeah, who isn't? Right? Who isn't feeling our own internal fears? Who isn't getting triggered? Uh, the limitations that hold us back. And yeah, th there's usually pain and, and uh, toxicity around that. You know, if there's a, a, an addiction, because people will use that as an addiction card, and I get it, because people are trying to medicate their pain rather than heal it. <laughs> Just saying, yeah. Since the dawn of time. So don't take it too personally. But again, that can be social conditioning here. My goddesses of Earth and the sign of Capricorn.
What's this look like? What's this feel like from the outside looking? And as if you were to walk up to me this way, what would my read on you be? <laughs> Ooh, Pele, the volcano, honey. You building up some molten magma underground there, ready to pop off, sis. <laughs> right? Give him hell. Uh, you know, people say, oh, the five of flames, the five of wands, it's always about conflict. This could be a kundalini experience. This could be a fire, a desire, something that you've wanted for so long boiling up inside of you and it's ready to blow. Now that could be a case of the repressed hornies, which I think is a nice way to say it on YouTube. Uh, yeah, like the horn section. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the repressed hornies. Uh, <laughs> they're all just sitting like this playing their their <laughs> their brass instruments. Uh, no, so so honestly, if this is romantic sexual, you want them, but there is a there may very be, well be a conflict, particularly if this is a student teacher relationship. Or they are triggering the fuck out of you. Now, I will say, Capricorn is the sign of the father. It's opposite Cancer, the sign of the mother. So this could be giving you some parental vibes from this person uh, when they're not literally your parent, or maybe it is. I could see this as a parental thing, too. Please, my goddesses, what is their hopes and fears? The destiny hewn from their fate on the hero's path of true love. Taurus. I just want to check something here. You only have one other court card here, Capricorn and Taurus. So we've got some Earth energies here. And again, <laughs> this is your internal experience. This is about you connecting with your bedrock life values, regardless of any Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Uranus, who cares? This is internal. Your destiny right now is hewn from fate. Fate is the lead. Uh, 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 destiny, the gold, right? You have to take the journey, the, the, the hero's journey to alchemize this on the path of true love. So you're being really almost forced to acknowledge what are my life values, particularly if your lesson is about unburdening yourself, unchaining yourself from fear. Shadow work, right? What is, is love the most important thing or not? Is the inspiration of the divine saying to you, there's more here than meets the eye, investigate. Slow and steady, darling, but investigate. Be true, be real. See this differently, right? But is what is the most important to you? That's why Taurus people will say things like, oh, abundance and prosperity. And it's like, yes, <laughs> yes. Also durable goods, right? Homes, cars, right? Not just like lunch, because uh, it's fixed to earth. But beneath that, to me, honesty, truth, honor, you may not cross the drawbridge into the castle of my soul without that, you won't even be able to get close. <laughs> okay, now that's what you call a victorious boundary, right? Oh, honey, my house is warded better than Fort Knox is protected. Oh, you're gonna, ch you're gonna have to crawl over. Uh, I'm waiting for a king to crawl over my wall. That sounds bad, but this does make sense. This does make sense. What are your true values? All right, one more of these, and then we see what this looks like on the outside. Please take a nice deep breath. I'm all in for you here, my cappies. What's going on? Breathe. <sighs> I'm also hearing if you really are the student and, uh, and you are in relationship to whoever this is, the victim with the Capricorn, it might be that they have a very, very strong work ethic. They're very precise and very creative. Emotionally, right? It's like, they, wow, interesting. Sorry, they're shooting shit in my head as I do this. <laughs> Clairvoyance and clairaudience for fun and profit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> my goddesses. My goddesses of Capricorn and uh, the element of Earth, what is the most probable outcome for this Capricorn collective sun, moon, rising, Venus, sun, watching this video, receiving this reading, please, goddess Persephone, maiden, lady, and queen. Most probable uh, outcome for the timeline of this lifetime. The Hermit. I see you holding back. <laughs> I see you holding back, but going higher. But really trying to get more of... Um, that GPS point of view. If you can see the larger arc of relationships in your life, particularly where your boundaries have been violated or you violated boundaries, that sounds like a lot of fun, should be a 
fun waning moon, full moon to new with Mercury retrograde. Yeah, 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 right? So pulling back, pulling up, seeing things from the stratosphere and alone. Sorry, at least that's your feeling inside, but we're going to look at what's going on on the outside. Next deck. <laughs> Next. Makeup. Mythic Tarot. Sorry, that's from the 1970s. <laughs> Can't expect the millennials to keep up with all that shit. Breathe. Oh, boy. I know who this is. And the god I mean. Oh, great Kronos. <laughs> Freed from Tartarus. Helping out the Olympians. <laughs> Please. Oh my god. Oh my gods of Earth and the sign of Capricorn. Let's clarify this, please. What's going on with that student? They got the student archetype with the lover's card. The uh, two other major, three other major arcana cards on the table. One, two, three, right? So four in total. So please, what does that look like? They got this life changing decision on the inner, on the outer, nine of cups, nine of cups on the inner, <laughs> on the outer for where you are. So you are already in touch with this. I think. You know how you feel about this person. I think that there are elements of wish fulfillment here for you. There's no question you're not showing your emotions, right? Because as the student, I mean, this could be a student teacher crush. It really could be. And that's the thing. If this person has their boundaries in place, you know, it's like that thing. I'm 52 and God's throw millennials at me all the time, like online. Like I said, no one's crossing this gate. Right? And I'm like, oh, it's just, I want someone my own age. It's like, well, that's not what you're contracted for right now. So, honey, take it step by step. And that's what I recommend here. If there is something weird like that, because remember, there are these rocks holding you back inside. So, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Um, yeah, let's just keep going. <laughs> Whoops, I put the wrong, because they're so similar. Uh, the Nine of Cups and uh, the Lover's Card. So... Please, my gods of Earth and the sign of Capricorn, what is this victim, victor archetype? With the Capricorn card in them, which could also mean that they're very much empathing, feeling the Capricorn here, really identifying with, like, the Capricorn's gotten under their skin. What's this about on the... Is there duplicity going on here? What's going on here? What does this look like in the outer? lovers. I think we know this is a lover. I'm going to say you're both in the same place, but you're doing it inside, dreamy as fuck, probably not communicating that. And they are being really slow and steady wins the race. Very methodical, but very creative. They're interested. Wow. A mutual decision. And you both have nine of cups. Come on. I, I got to say, <laughs> I know you want me to slow down, but nope. People say I talk too fast. I'm like, first of all, have we met A? <laughs> and B, have you met my family? <laughs> there are no weak personalities in my family. Talk about a pantheon. My gods of earth and the sign of Capricorn, please. I got Quan Yin, nine of cups at the core there. Not really aware of, except I think for whoever this first position is. Ooh, Knight of Wands, Belepharon on Pegasus, Sagittarius energy. This is just going to keep going wildfire, guys. This is just going to keep building. It's mutable. It may change from day to day in intensity, right? Uh, killing the Chimera here. Not the Chimera ants, darling. That's Hunter Hunter. Uh, the original Chimera. Um, this is very much go with the flow. Feel it inside of you. Give yourself compassion. But there is fire here. And yeah, it's mutable. It's like, well, I want that, but what about that? What about that sort of thing. This is not a person. This is an energy dynamic. It's a diacal uh, energy dynamic, ninth house expansion, and spirituality, by the way. It's a very strong spiritual connection with this on the crown. So it's it, all of this is just sort of burling away under the surface. <laughs> it's just going to hit. Uh, and you've thought about it? If you have not met this person yet, I would be surprised. I mean, maybe not have met face to face uh, with the past year's social limitations. Um, I don't know. Uh, with this appraisal, though, this looking back over your shoulder is either really appraising your relationships with people in general. And remember, we're getting ready for a Mercury retrograde in Gemini. Ugh. 
Wake me up. <laughs> I was going to say when September ends. I love Billy Joe. Here we go. Here we go, Billy Joe. Uh, what's going on here? What does this look like on the outside, please, for this Capricorn, this Seven of Pentacles on the outer, and Page of Wands. Uh, sorry, pay, uh, appraisal on the inner, Page of Wands on the outer, you two. You've communicated. There's no question. You're going from the page, and now it's grown to the night. Whatever went on between the two of you, the spark is there. This is wish fulfillment. You both have major life decisions to make. But if you can really, if you are the student here, because again, I'm feeling a flip-flop here with that Capricorn there. Get that. I don't know, but I'm willing to be shown, right? I'm going to stay humble, right? And, and I'm going to devote myself to learning whatever I have to learn here and be open to a lifelong learning process with this person. Although if it truly is a student-teacher relationship, that could be finding like your guru. But I don't get that. I mean, maybe this person is a guru, a teacher. And if you are the victim, victor archetype here, boundaries and self-esteem, boundaries and self-esteem, boundaries and self-esteem, and binge watch Carolyn Mace videos, read sacred contracts, at least the first uh, bit of it that taught, well, the first, not the first part of the book necessarily, but when she's talking about uh, the survival family uh, of uh, archetypes. This is really important. This person may very well be trying to survive this. You got that ace of, this feels so yummy. This feels hot and yummy and high. <laughs> you know what? I can say hi, but if it has three syllables, hi. <laughs> I'm interested. What does that look like on the outer? Getting ready to land, right? Getting ready to pop into their crown chakras. Are you kidding me? The ace of cups with the ace of flames. Get out of town, caps. Do we need to finish this? We're going to. Of course we're going to finish this out. But get, come on, come on. I think someone's going to bust a move. I don't know who yet. <laughs> but let's find out. A one, a two, a three, crunch, three. Well, if this is you, surrender. I let go and let God, I let go and let God us receive all energies that I have created. I release them to the will of the greater power of love, trusting that everything is becoming fully balanced in its own time and place, and that there is a greater reality unfolding here and now. <laughs> what does that look like on the outer, please? So, okay. Fuck. <laughs> So, you got this going on on the inner, I surrender, I look go, I'm willing to see things different. While you're casting your brains out and manifesting for this person as the magician, one foot on the gas, one foot on the brake much? I mean, you gotta say, it's a good, it's a good balance of surrender and action, right? What's actually called active surrender, when you surrender to the divine without necessarily an intention to do anything other than be that channel of the divine. Who's going to pull the trigger there, though? I mean, you both have the lover's card. Who's going to pull the trigger first on this one? You got some fear to face, and it's not about this person. And vice versa. If you are the, the victim here, and, and the person you're dealing with is the student, then you got some face, uh, some some fear facing to do, some shadow work to do. What does this look like on the outer, please, my gods of Taurus? <laughs> And the element of earth. Yeah, five of swords. There are some tough conversations that are triggering you. Um, I don't always go down for the five of swords being about necessarily arguments, but it's a change of mind. Fives numerolo numerologically are usually about change, right? Four, stability. Five, the change. And then six, the balance after that change. Well... <laughs> I mean, considering you've got this in your future, why wouldn't you, right? What's before you on the path is the magician on the outer with the hanged man, reversal, seeing it differently on the inner. So facing your fears, but getting that, your beliefs are, are, are changing. You're seeing things differently. And yes, there are going to be conflicting beliefs. Like, for instance, love is all there is, but I'm terrified of being hurt again. Huh? Right? Well, which is it? Uh, I, I just skimming through Matt Kahn's book, Everything is Here to Help You, which is a very triggery title, but it's true. Uh, he talks about that, that the ego as, is at war. It worries, anticipates, and regrets. The ego is raw. It respects 
acknowledges and welcomes, right? So there is a transformation going on here for you, no question, but it is shadow work. It is really, and I would say you might even be getting conflicting information of what shadow work is or how to go about it because there are spiritual versions of it, there are mystical versions of it, there are psychological versions of it. I mean, the hero's journey itself, uh, the hero always has to go down into the underworld in some way, shape, or form to face their shadow, uh, battling their demons, wrestling their demons, slaying their dragons, pick your... I don't know no dragons were harmed in the making of this YouTube video, but certainly a lot of conflicting thought. I would say that. I would definitely say that. Your element of error, your beliefs of what you think uh, might be being severely challenged here, because you've done the analysis, that's the thing, or your beliefs about your uh, analysis, part of those rocks holding you back, holding you down. Again, from the outside looking in, Eighth position, Pele, the volcano, not to be joked with. And if you ever go there, just leave the rocks there. I've never been, but I know that. Someone gave me a piece of Stonehenge once many, many years ago, though I still have it in a box upstairs. <laughs> My gods, please. Pele on the inside, what's this on the outside? Yeah, Queen of Cups, you ain't letting go. You, you ain't letting on. You are Helena Troy, the Scorpio card. Gorgeous, emotional, feeling it, empathic, intuitive, but not letting on one little bit about how you feel. In fact, you might very well be very much, oh yes, well, thank you so very much. Oh, what a pleasure, right? Like holding court. Elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist, wrist. Uh, so I get that. You're boiling on the inside and cold on the outside, and you know, maybe you warm up a little bit. It, it really has to do, I feel like this communication, this message, pages or messages, not necessarily messengers to me, uh, that really made you appraise and look back over your life, look back over your past, your relationships here, and you've gained a lot of wisdom. If you can write, write I'm a student, I'm learning, I don't know it all, I don't know what all this is about, and if this person really is um, the, the victim crossing your path is in this kind of life-changing decision with you as well. Maybe is a teacher, maybe triggers your father stuff because of the Capricorn stuff. I could see this shadow work, right? You'd be like, no, like, because you, if you get, it's like, oh, this has nothing to do with them. <laughs> this is my stuff, right? Then you can absolutely, what, Scorpio, transform it emotionally within yourself because there's this wish fulfillment and this fire here. So, this makes sense. Your destiny comes on the inner by getting all Taurus about it, getting really grounded. What are my life values? Because people say love is the most important thing, right? Until money gets involved, right? Or spirit, my spiritual path is everything. And you can never be off your spiritual path, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. What are your core values here? What does this look like on the outside, please? My gods of earth and sign of Capricorn, just one, please. For this Capricorn Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, I'm watching this video, receiving this reading, the star. <laughs> so you're radiant. You're shining like a light. You're shining like a star. You are getting guidance. You are getting grace. You are tapped in. You should know that. <laughs> you should know that. Uh, whichever you are, the student or the, let's just say the victor for right now, um, you are being guided towards victory regardless of who you are here, but it is all dependent upon you being really in alignment with your ethics, your values, what's really important to you. Look, for some people, because of their past and their pain, their values are do it to them before they do it to you, right? Trust no one. And I get that. I have that. Trust me, I have that. I'm a purple-haired gay witch, 52 years old. You don't do all of that completely open and flowing. Not with four planets in Virgo. Uh, so you get what I'm saying here? It's like you are radiant. You are shining. You are being guided through this like a student would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you better be really, really clear. Not just on what you want. What is of value to you? Because if it all comes down to the dollar, which that's a lot of people's bottom line, then love is at least secondary. He said trying to crack his knuckles to for effect. But that's okay. You got the hermit. Good. Good. Her, I love that. I live as a fun. <laughs> I'm the purple witched hermit witch of uh, Hel of Holbrook, right? The pur purple haired <laughs> witch of hermit witch of Holbrook. <sighs> I love this. This is the Kaliach, right? The crone in this deck. Riding above Stonehenge or some similar 
stone circle there carrying a lit wand with a crystal, right? So even that element of earth present there. Yes, the Virgo card. Can you give me an alien in there? What does this look like on the outside, please? <laughs> Seven of Swords. Sneaky, 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 sneaky. This could be self-preservation, though, and I think it really does align up rather well um, with this Scorpio card that you're fronting on the outside. Look, I think you really like this person. I think it's a lot of emotion what you're feeling, and I think you're afraid they don't feel the same way. I think they feel the same way. And I think there are maybe some ethical challenges here, particularly, but if this is somebody who's not a victimizer then really they've done this before in some way, shape, or form, and they have clear boundaries or, or, or are at least willing to have those. I mean, I can't say it enough. I mean, in this card, the lovers in, in this particular deck, you've got Athena, Aphrodite, and uh, uh, Hera. So Athena is the heart. Sorry, Aphrodite is the heart. Athena is the mind. And uh, love, wisdom, power, the choice Hera, the queen's command, right? So balancing that, bringing that together, the judgment of Paris, by the way, <laughs> the scene depicted here <laughs> is called the judgment of Paris, not the city, the hero, right? Um, because they didn't invite uh, a certain goddess to a wedding <laughs> and she threw a golden apple into the reception, written on it to the most beautiful goddess. Those three jumped for it. It's how the Trojan War began, essentially. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, like, it's just an apple. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Let's, uh, let's, let's get some more clarity here. We're going to talk to your higher selves, you and whoever this is in the collective. Whispers of Love Oracle. This is a different vibe entirely. Please take a nice deep breath. Hmm. Mm -hmm. The higher selves have all involved. Please, two cards, one for this student archetype and one for this victim victor archetype in this Capricorn collective sun, moon, rising, Venus. I'm watching this video, receiving this reading. Path of true love, timeless true love read. They've got the student, lovers on the inner, nine of cups on the outer. What is their piece of information, inspiration, insight? Embrace your emotions. Uh, don't push down your feelings or judge your emotions. <laughs> Shadow work much? Uh, the Shadow Effect by Debbie Ford. It's a movie. You can probably find it on YouTube. Put out by Hay House. Feels like way over 10 years ago. Sort of like The Secret, but darker. And there's this image of this woman in an Olympic-sized swimming pool with beach balls she's trying to hold underwater. Perfect metaphor for emotional repression and shadow work. Because the moment you get distracted, all pops up. Uh, please, the higher selves of all involved, this victim, victor archetype here with Capricorn on the inner. And I do feel something almost noble going on here. Like this person has actually climbed this mountain before, so they have a deeper wisdom. And I feel a certain kindness here. Like I think their boundaries are intact because they've been victimized. But they also have the, you both have the lover's card. Higher selves, what's their message? Do something for somebody else. <laughs> Do something for somebody else. Give your attention to somebody else. Well, it, it, so here's the thing. You need to embrace your emotions while they get ready to make this choice and do something for you. Now, what that something is, I don't know. But darling, I feel like you're going to be holding back and playing possum for a little bit. And there's nothing wrong with that. If there's shadow work to be done, better to do it. But there are ways of communicating, because remember, see, this is the one that says, yeah, the best laid plans of mice and men, Capricorn. Uh, you've got the Ace of Wands on the inner, and Ace of Cups on the outer, hovering, ready to come down, does feel like a, ch a game changer. Some sort of information's coming in. Because let me see, do we see any communication here? This has been the theme with these readings so far. It's like very little to no communication, because of that lover's energy, what comes out of your mouth, right? Your head and your heart. It feels like both of you, your head and your heart, are saying different things. How do you get congruent? Another word from Carolyn Mays. Brilliant. Last card down, I think. This is so, this is almost jigsaw puzzle, self-explanatory. Uh, but let's get you the healing mantra, right? So regardless of who you are in this work, this mantra is going to help you heal your stuff. And if it's a soulmate contract, it's going to help heal them. And if it's a twin flame contract, you speed your way through Speed your way through a twin flame contract by learning how to love yourself and heal yourself. Breathe. Oh. All right. 
Ascended Masters of True Love, please. What is the perfect healing mantra? It's very soft for this Capricorn Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I'm watching this video, receiving this reading, dealing with this student archetype and this victim archetype on the path of true love, please. Liberating love. <laughs> From oppression, you think? Damn, I'm good. Well, it's the cards time. I can't take responsibility for what card hits my hand. Liberating love. I allow myself to receive all the fulfillment I'm willing to give. <laughs> snort. <laughs> Hashtag snort. Uh, liberating love. Let me just read it because this actually, I know this one, it pretty much says it all. Oh, let's get the magnifying glass. I need to wash the pollen out of my eyes. I allow myself to receive all the fulfillment I'm willing to give, which has a mnemonic device in it with receive, uh, then give, right? Um, when love is liberated, your heart remains open to all the gifts that life has to offer. As love is liberated from the emotional wounds of the human condition, it becomes easy to accept, forgive, and receive. Now, easy, usually I'm used to saying simple need not apply easy. This is saying the more you kind of liberate, open your heart, at least to yourself, no one else needs to see it right right away, um, that it does get easier. And, and I will say that is, that's sort of true. At least it goes faster. It becomes, right, easy to accept, forgive, and receive. When such actions seem exhausting, it's simply a sign that your heart doesn't feel safe enough to remain open. You hear that, right? So that's okay too, right? I'm not ready to do that. Well, it tells you what to do. Uh, when it doesn't feel safe, uh, uh, it doesn't feel safe enough to open. When this occurs, your will's freedom, right? Throat chakra, your will's freedom to embrace tender corner of your consciousness will allow opening up to resume. Uh, when the heart has permission to open, your love is liberated and you can shine a light into all levels of reality to awaken the truth of all. That's pretty major. Love is the truth of who we are. And the funny cup say, like, what's, what's with your destiny card? Like, love is the most important thing unless <laughs> right? Unless they're a Gemini in my book, then hard pass, swipe left. Uh, this mantra is ideal for learning how to believe in yourself, student, if you're the student, promoting self-realization, which is sort of amazing, which is 10th house, highest potential Capricorn, uh, uh, and integrating the shadow. If I was Katya, I would pick up, I would run down the green wall. Uh, oh my goodness gracious. Yeah, that's what you call a puzzle piece reading. All of these pieces are on the table. So uh, let me put this together for you in the blessing, because it's just the easiest way to do it, having the grace of prayer and all. Please, sorry being a Virgo for a moment, please take a nice deep breath. <laughs> My collective pantheons of angels, archangels, goddesses, gods, ascended masters of true love, and the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above, may this beautiful, blessed Capricorn collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, watching this video, receiving this reading, be blessed with all that they need on the path of true love, that uh, they may experience the humility and devotion to knowledge with an openness to lifelong learning, with the decisions that they make and really, really embracing this Nine of Cups, perhaps even they have learned their own self-love, that emotional wish fulfillment within their own energy field, dealing with this victim-victor archetype. And uh, may they know how to prevent themselves from vic being victimized or victimizing others, right? With clean, healthy boundaries, strong noble, long-lasting, a king of pentacles energy as they make the decision, the life-changing decision that they need to make. With this wish fulfillment, they are both feeling and both want to move on, but because of somebody's appraisal of the past there, this new connection, this new desire is bringing stuff up as it certainly should be, as the potential for a new beginning in love with passion fuming it. Oh my goodness gracious, like, like a cup of water with heat boiling it up from underneath such a rolling boil in potential here so that 
they can see this differently in the future, moving forward, while still calling in what's right for them, whether it's this person or not, right? Learning the lesson here of regardless of what thoughts are going on to really deal with what they are feeling, liberating love, uh, allowing themselves to receive all the fulfillment they are willing to give, feeling this volcano on the inside, but being cool and calm and polite on the outside, maybe a little salty is Scorpio, with their destiny being about their core values, what is most important to them, which is usually hidden underneath an oppression, while they shine and radiate like a star, following their guidance and their grace. Being a little self-preservation, I'm not feeling so much lies here with them, but that they are being a little covert here with how they feel as they take this inner journey of the hermit within them in their outcome, embracing their emotions, not pushing down their feelings or judging their emotions with this person in their life who is to do something for someone else, giving their attention in some way, shape, or form to this student archetype. Regardless of which one is the Capricorn, may they be blessed with all that they need to heal, to learn, to grow, to love again, to love anew, to heal the past and move forward into new terrain, new mountains to climb, goats that they are, up that path that you love to the pinnacle where they will find the foothills of the next for the well-being of all. So motivate. Hey, and so it is. Wow. <laughs> Fucking knock down, drag out. Capricorn read. They're kind of all like that, though. But wow, I mean, look, as far as the path that you love read goes, not that bad. But it feels like you guys are not hooking up anytime immediately soon. But, you know, check your other signs. This could just be one aspect of it. So if you liked it, like it. Want more, subscribe. Want to read my book? Link in the description box. You want to follow me on Facebook, the Drawing the Circle Facebook page. We're going to be doing more live streaming events, both paid and free. There's a lot of shit going on. Millennial Minute is getting ready to launch in the next week or so. We've got a meeting with uh, our, our millennial who will be doing that on the channel. So subscribe, hang out, chill. I'm the fun one. And, uh, you know, if you like commenting and sharing it, have at it. Otherwise, wishing you the very, very best and the very, very blessed you big magician. Uh, the path of true love, a uh, timeless hail, <laughs> farewell, and blessed, blessed be.